Thank you very much. The, uh, I'm going to talk briefly about how I came to be here. I have a long grassroots background in government. I was the winner in a Democratic primary in which I defeated the choice of the majority leader of the New York State Assembly to become the Democratic candidate in this race. I'm a civil rights and employment attorney in private practice. I represent people who have not been paid wages they were owed, or did not get pensions they were due, or people that were victims of discrimination in the workplace on the basis of age, race, sex, or disability. I decided, somewhat out of the blue, in 1999, to run for a seat in the Albany County Legislature in a district that had never elected a Democrat. To everyone's surprise, and a bit to mine, I was elected. Since that time, I've been elected, re-elected three times. And I think it shows that I have an ability to cut across party lines, gaining support, and also that the voters have been relatively happy with my uh, performance. But the main thing is that I've learned a lot serving in the county legislature. I've learned a lot about the things the state does that make it difficult for our local communities to have success. And I'd just like to mention two of them today. Medicaid. It's, I'm a Democrat. I support Medicaid and health care system for the poor, but it's funded differently in New York than any other state. The state passes down half its cost to the counties, and that's a tremendous uh, burden on us that's reflected in your property tax. Secondly, education. We'd like to take the politics out of education funding, get an objective uh, way, formula of distributing the education aid so that the superintendents of schools can properly plan their budget and avoid laying off teachers. Thank you very much. Ms. Whalen. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Good evening. I'm Jennifer Whalen, and I'm running for assembly because we need leaders with the courage to stand up, speak out, and fight for a better New York. I will be that leader. I will work to create more jobs, build a stronger economy so our children can stay here, protect taxpayers by stopping unfunded mandates and wasteful spending, and clean up the culture of corruption and sexual harassment in the assembly. This race boils down to leadership, and which candidate has shown the capacity and the courage to lead. I will lead, my opponent hasn't. I will lead by putting my proven experience to work by tackling fraud and corruption and protecting taxpayers, just as I did as an assistant attorney general. Unlike my opponent, I am not afraid to speak out. The record is clear. When the story first broke that Assemblyman Vito Lopez was sexually harassing female assembly employees, I spoke out and demanded that Lopez resign or be expelled. When it was next reported that Sheldon Silver tried to cover it up by secretly paying $103,000 of taxpayer money to the victims, I spoke out and demanded that Silver resign and that the taxpayers get their money back. When my opponent learned of all of this, what did he do? He says he sent a press release. A press release is not leadership. Not only did my opponent fail to speak out, he's accepting thousands of dollars from Sheldon Silver to fund his campaign. Every time you see a Phil Steck ad on TV or receive one of his misleading, misleading mailers, remember this. It was bought and paid for by money raised by the same political boss who used taxpayer dollars to cover up sexual harassment in the legislature. After years of fighting for tax relief, New York finally got a property tax cap in place to protect homeowners. Phil Steck voted to override that tax cap in its first year. <coughs> now we'll turn to our first question. 